but if you force it, you're not going to get it. But if you earn the respect, and you, you and, and if you do it in a way where sometimes you don't have to necessarily push it, but you understand that the whole character fills in where, where she actually has, comes into power in her own right, you get a lot further. And um, I'm sure you have that all the time with, with women to, to get a lot more just uh, with sugar and spice than you do with, with the other side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now what about New York, who's sort of torn between these two very powerful people? And, and how can he reconcile sort of the things as well as that and the things that he doesn't quite understand his mother for doing? Well, I think uh, in season two he was uh, a boy and he was torn and he had that. And it's amazing how even back then nothing really changes. You'll be able to go through the same stuff as you did back then. Um, the lifestyle may have been a little different, but at the end of the day it was a very similar issue. Um, so he was definitely a little torn and then by season three I think he's become a man and he realizes to, to take what he can, when he can from each individual and respect that they both are powerful people in their own right and he's lucky to be their son. How does it feel coming into season three, whereas last time you were like the new kid on the block, you know, um, you're much more part of the family, I'm assuming now. <laughs> um, it's, it's a totally different experience and it's a great one at that. Like, I've never done a TV show before and I'm so happy this was the best decision I've ever made in my entire life. I've learned so much beyond this, and uh, you come back and you realize it's the same crew, and the same cast, it's like one big family, um, and it's incredible. And it's definitely easy, I mean, you know, when you first come, it was, uh, you know, the uh, show was such a success right off the bat, which I don't know if anybody expected, it was unbelievable, it took everyone by surprise. Um, so it was definitely intimidating, I wanted to bring some of the essence that the original uh, actor for the had, Nathan, great. Tool, who's fantastic, and I wanted to keep some of that essence, but at the same time show that he's grown up and he's mature and he's learned more. And now at this, you know, it's just a three years of Oh yeah, so you, you have your own journey. Um, you're on our side, so it's just a his own journey, and you, you will see that journey. Yeah. And then we, we start really respecting each other's opinions now. We have this really cool team that we've developed across each other, which is awesome. It's kind of how we've been growing up, too. Sure. I think the dynamic been. has changed in season two with Lago and Buren, and even in season three, that there has to be a certain level of mutual respect that he is now, you know, someone that has his own voice, that has his own opinions, that has his own choices. And, and as anybody, being a mother, and I haven't been a mother yet, I can only imagine of that. A bit of a loss, but also admiration that you do the right thing. And that's something that I'm struggling with and learning and discovering, but it's also great just to be able to play that. Well, yeah, he's still very aware that his mother could kick his ass. <laughs> On that note, we're going to get amazing fights into that. 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 It's a very intense show. Like when you're not on set shooting, you're either learning your different fight coordination and your sequences with the with the sound coordinators, or you're, you're learning how to ride a horse, or you're working on your dialect. Um, so there's so many different levels of the show where, and we're shooting in Ireland, it's a very intense shoot. It's not like where I have some of my friends that are on TV shows and studios and networks, and they go in and they leave. And they're in the studio, and it's all pretty nice. This is, this is a full-on, hands-on, brutal, raw, amazing show, and I think because of that, it takes a certain actor to do it. And I think that's the reason why people responded to it because everybody on the show, everybody is there because they really truly want to be there. You wouldn't survive if you did it. It's not glamorous at all. It's, no. it's hard to get there. But I mean, this is the glamorous part. Right now. <laughs> when you're on set, it, you do it you but you just won't make it. I'm wearing heels for the first time in months. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Like in, in one hand, it's a blessing in disguise when when you're shooting up in the mountains and you don't have cell reception and you're there and you have to tell stories in a heated tent or or just entertain.
entertain ourselves by God knows what, but we're just chatting, so it, it just helps us to keep it all in a family unit and it also helps you have to just be, and, and, you know, and I said this on the panel, it's not just us. The background actors on the show are so fantastic. If you see them, you meet them in person. They've grown their own beards, and shield maidens have trained on their off season and learned how to fight with the sword and the shield. That the, these characters help fill in a lifestyle and fill in a culture that we couldn't do it without them. And even though you, they may not get the same amount of screen time, they create a world that allows us to step into whenever you come on set. It really is a special space in the and on the biking set because everybody from the set to the crew to the to the background actors really make this all an amazing show. How do you feel about the back um, the relationship between the women on the show because when they were advertising the, the season, it very much looked like it was going to be this crazy love triangle. And I was like, no, don't do that. You know? <laughs> I didn't say that, did I? Yeah. <laughs> I, I went against that, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's different, you know. That would be on any other show. That is the Without direction they go. Without making it some corny bullshit, it's like, this is so real and gritty, and this is like real life stuff. It, it, my, and I, all the pops go to Michael for that, too. He really is an incredible writer, and he really tries to make it as gritty as possible. And to answer your question, I think every woman character, every female character has her own arc. Yes, I'm a shield maiden, and I may get the power in terms of the glory of fighting the battle sequences, but also as a mother. But also, Princess Alslog has her own battles, and being a mother and dealing now with um, Ivor the Boneless, and, and dealing with somebody or, or Snake Eyes, you know, dealing with different challenges as a mother, and Siggy goes through her own challenge, and Lauren goes through her own different arc. So, you have different sides of the female personality and the different sides of, of being a female in that time period that gets explored in this. What? No, go ahead. What is the uh, the future of Bjorn? He has a mother who is an Arl, and his father is now a king. Is he thinking maybe he'll stay within this sort of royal royal area, or do you get a branch out on his own and try and create the <laughs> Uh, I think, yeah, he's got, he's, he wants to, he wants power, he wants to leave, um, and he wants, he wants to, you know, Vikings, like, their whole thing was fame, they wanted to, um, they wanted to be known, they wanted to leave a legacy, and I think in some way, all of us want to do something like that, whether it's on a small scale or a large scale, um, you know, that's why we have families, but he wants to, I mean, that is always a thing, is you want to surpass your father. But at the same time, he respects the relationship he has with him and he loves him, just like he does his mother. And he learns from him. He's smart like that. He really sits back and he tries to take it as much as he can. And definitely in this season, you'll see him start um, thinking that way. He wants to go and do more of the games. He wants to do what his dad did on a bigger scale. Historically, that's what he did too, so uh, Michael's definitely setting it up. Yeah, Baron Ironside in history has, is he actually even more famous than Ragnar. If anybody knows that, yeah. so he actually has a big shoes to fill. He does a great job. I'm for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, you guys. Have a good time. Thank you. Have a good one.